In our daily life, we rely on services, whether it's for our entertainment, for making transactions, or for our basic wants and needs. So to get these services right, it has to be well managed. Service management is a set of organizational capabilities for enabling value for customers in the form of services. Capabilities is abilities an organization applies to resources in order to create value. These capabilities include tangible things like capital, people, and equipment, and it can also include intangible things like knowledge, management, and skills. The goal of IT service management is to maximize the value delivered and obtained from technology-driven products and services. ITSM is about implementing, managing, and delivering quality IT services in the best possible way to meet the needs of a business. Companies nowadays are using IT to improve their processes and gain competitive advantage and many other benefits. So the goal is to maximize value, which brings us to the question, what is value? Value means perceived benefits, usefulness, and importance of something. This means that value can be the process, the outcome, or even the benefit. Why is it that you would prefer certain brands like McDonald's or Jollibee rather than other fast food chains, or Coca-Cola or Pepsi? That is because these brands have value to you, and it may be different for every consumer. Value is not just something that organizations give or deliver. It also has to be something that is received by someone who appreciates that value. Value can also be subjective. It depends on the perceptions of stakeholders. One group of stakeholders might find it useful, but others might not. Take an example of a food delivery service. For some people, the value is convenience because people would not want to go out, a variety of options, and multiple payment methods. But for some people, it doesn't give value to them because of the wait times, it's more expensive, and the quality of food may suffer. Value is not just something where an organization creates it and then other people enjoy. It has to be co-created, which brings us to the first key concept of service management, value co-creation. Value co-creation is co-created because they're sharing in creating value. Value co-creation is a collaboration between providers, consumers, and organizations. Before, the organizations or service providers would deliver value to their customers in a monodirectional manner, where the customer plays no role in value creation. But now, value co-creation is recognized by organizations. Collaboration is made so that they would know what is it that they value, so that they can deliver that value to them. Service providers don't create value for customers, rather they work with customers to create value for both parties. Some examples of value co-creation would be Starbucks and Spotify. They built an initiative called the Music Ecosystem, wherein Starbucks employees get a Spotify premium subscription with which they can arrange playlists to play throughout the day in the shop. This music ecosystem is designed to expand the coffee house environment that Starbucks is known for while giving artists greater exposure to Starbucks customers. Since value is co-created, it is important to identify who are those involved. A stakeholder is a person or organization that has an interest or involvement in an organization, product, service, practice, or others which will be affected by them. Some of the main stakeholders in service management are organization, service provider, and service consumer. An organization is a person or a group that has its own function with responsibilities, authorities, and relationships to achieve objectives. The same organization can be the service consumer and service provider. When providing services, the company plays the role of the service provider. A service provider is an organization that takes up the role of creating and delivering services. Examples of service providers are banks, internet service providers, telecoms, and many more. Service consumer is an organization that takes up the role of receiving services. Basically, they are the one who receives the service. Under service consumer, there is customer, user, and sponsor. A customer is a person who defines the requirements for a service and takes responsibility for the outcomes of service consumption. An example would be an IT manager. A user is a person who uses the services. 
An example would be the company employees. And sponsor is a person who authorizes the budget for service consumption. An example would be the finance manager. A service consumer may be any one of them or may be the same person. Identifying these roles in service relationships is important in effective communication and stakeholder management and for when producing products and services. A product is any configuration of an organization's resources designed to offer value for a consumer. Service, on the other hand, is a means of enabling value co-creation by facilitating outcomes that customers want to achieve without the customer having to manage specific costs and risk. Here's an example for products and services. In an ATM, an ATM card is a product and its service would be the financial services such as withdrawing money, knowing your balance, and others. Another example, router and cable are products and the internet or network connection from the internet service provider is the service. Products themselves do not create value or generate value from customers. An ATM card does not give value without the ATM and the router and cable does not give value without having the network where you can connect to the internet. In order to do that, the service provider describes the outcomes that can be achieved by using these products in the form of service offerings. A service offering is a description of one or more services designed to address the needs of a target consumer group. It includes the three main components of service offerings, which are goods, access to resources, and service actions. Goods are the ones supplied to the consumer. Ownership is transferred from the provider to the consumer, and the consumer takes the responsibility for future use. Example would be devices, appliances, and consumer goods. For access to resources, ownership is not transferred to the consumer. It remains with the provider. Access is granted or licensed to the consumer under agreed terms and conditions. The consumer can only access the resources during the agreed consumption period and according to the agreed service terms. For example, when you buy a ticket to a museum, you don't own the museum, but you have access to enter it for only a day. Service actions is performed by the service provider to address consumer needs. It is performed by the service provider according to an agreement with the consumer. You cannot achieve value without actions, so organizations or providers need actions to provide these service offerings to the consumers, and these actions are called service relationships. A service relationship is defined as a cooperation between a service provider and a service consumer. A company must do more than merely offer service in order to generate profit. It must cooperate in service agreements with customers. Having a good service relationship between the provider and consumer is important in order to develop customer loyalty and to enable continual value co-creation. Service relationships include service provision, service consumption, and service relationship management. Service provisions are the activities performed by an organization to provide services. Example would be supplying of goods and fulfilling the service actions. Service consumption are the activities performed by an organization to consume services. For example, receiving goods, using the services, and requesting for services. On the other hand, service relationship management are the joint activities performed by a service provider and service consumer to ensure continual value co-creation based on agreed and available service offerings. To give you a clear picture of activities that are being done, here is the service relationship model. This basically shows that an organization can have the role of being a service consumer and a service provider. When services are delivered by the provider, they create new resources or modify existing ones for service consumers. The service consumer can use its new or modified resources to create its own products to address the needs of another target consumer group thus becoming a service provider. So it's a chain that moves forward. It allows consumers to become providers in their own way. A service provider ends up being a consumer of another service. 
An example would be that an IT company would provide services to an airline company, which makes the airline company a consumer. The airline company may be a service provider for a travel agency who becomes a consumer to the airline company. And the travel agency may also provide services to their customers or to the people who would want to travel. So this is used to showcase the ever-changing interaction between service providers and consumers. Service relationships are perceived as valuable only when they have more positive effects than negative, particularly regarding impact on outcomes, costs, and risks. When an organization acts as a service provider, it produces outputs that help its consumers to achieve certain outcomes. Outcomes is the result for a stakeholder that was enabled by one or more outputs. An outcome are what the business wants or needs to achieve, while the output are the actions or items that contribute to achieving an outcome. The outcome are the changes that happens as a result of creating the output. For example, a business outcome would be increased customer satisfaction. An output that can help achieve this might be a responsive online ordering system. So here, for example, the service provider has resources to create an output of a mobile banking app. Then this output is installed in the phone for the consumer to use. The outcome is that the customer can now make easy and faster transactions and gives them convenience because they don't have to go to a physical bank. Service providers help their consumers achieve outcomes, and with that, they would have to take on some risks and costs. Costs are the amount of money spent on a specific activity or resource. From the service consumer's perspective, there are two types of costs involved in service relationship. Costs imposed on consumer by the service and costs removed from the consumer by the service. Cost imposed on the consumer by the service includes price charged by the service provider, other costs such as staff training, procurement, etc. When you're on a vacation, you stay in a hotel, you would pay for the service provider, but then you would also have to pay for local tourist tax. While costs removed from the consumer by the service include cost of staff, technology, and other resources, which the consumer does not need to provide. In a car sharing service, the customer does not pay for the actual cost of purchasing the car. Risks, on the other hand, is a possible event that could cause harm or loss or make it more difficult to achieve objectives. There are two types of risk that are concerning to service consumers. Risk imposed on consumer by the service and risk removed from the consumer by the service. An example of risks imposed on a consumer by the service would be a service provider experiencing a security breach. Or let's say you want a house, and so you pay for the services of a construction company to build your dream house. During the job, the machine that they use broke or malfunctioned, and this would delay the outcome that you wish to be achieved. In other words, the job may not end at the agreed time. And that is a risk that is possibly imposed on the consumer. On the other hand, risk removed from a consumer by the service may include the failure of the consumer server hardware or lack of staff availability. Given the example mentioned before, let's say the machine that malfunctioned from the construction of your house caused harm to some of the construction workers. Since you are the customer and you paid for the service, the risks that come with the job are not owned by you, but rather is owned by the construction company, so it's their liability. And so the risks are removed from the customer and is managed by the service provider. Value also has two parts, utility and warranty. Utility is the functionality offered by a product or service to meet a particular need. It can be summarized as what the service does and can be used to determine whether a service is fit for purpose. To have utility, a service must either support the performance of the consumer and or remove constraints from the consumer. Warranty is the assurance that a product or service will meet agreed requirements. It answers how the service performs or whether a service is fit for use. So for the service to be fit for use, it needs to meet the four service level conditions. First, availability. It needs to be available. Second, capacity. 
it must have sufficient capacity for end users to use normally. If it keeps on buffering, then it may not be valuable. Next is continuity. A service needs to be available continuously. There shouldn't be breaks of downtimes on a regular basis, which wouldn't add value to the user. And lastly, a service must be secure. If you are using a courier delivery service, the utility involves the delivery of your packages while warranty is about the speed and handling of your packages. Both utility and warranty are essential for a service to facilitate its desired outcomes and help to create value. Hopefully, this video has helped you in understanding the key concepts in service management in ITIL. Thank you!